Serious, what were some small or strange health symptoms you experienced that turned out to be something more serious? A little over 4 months ago I started feeling very strange at work, like, you know those old TV shows where they'd go into a dream sequence and everything was fuzzy and out of focus? That, I was walking and talking, but not 100% present. It had me freaked out, so I went to a co-worker's office, sat down, and tried to explain what I was feeling. After a bit, he asked so, do you want to go to urgent care? He'd been through a heart attack, so I said yes. Arrived at urgent care a short time later, they took my blood pressure, and said that there were two emergency rooms nearby, and which one did I want to go to? Not if, but which one? The diagnosis was malignant hypertension. I wound up in the IQ for a couple days, and have been on a crap ton of BP medication since. The episode happened about 4 in the afternoon. If it had happened at 4 in the morning, with nobody around to take me to the hospital, I might be a lot more dead right now. When I was in the military I started having a strange ache in my abdomen. Ignored it for about 2 days. The third day I had everything coming out of both ends mostly non-stop. Made it to sick call that day and they told me I had the flu. Later that night while on patrol my partner found me unconscious behind the wheel and took me to the on base. Turns out my appendix had ruptured on that first day and I didn't know about it. Emergency surgery 2 hours after arriving at the air and 2 days in IQ and 5 more in a regular bed after they told me that I was born with one kidney and I was being discharged because of it. Fun times. The amount of folks I met while in the navy who had only just discovered medical issues after getting in. I knew at least two people who found out they had Crohn's disease, one who got separated, and the other who tried to hide it. No idea what happened to the latter guy. Last he told me he was pretty sure he was crapping part of his intestine. Thought I had a bug bite on my forearm. Over the course of two weeks it became painful to hold anything. Then it became painful to move my fingers. Forearm swelled to roughly 1.5 times its normal size. About a week later, 3 weeks from when I first noticed the bug bite, girlfriend just takes me to the air. They say oh it's probably a bug bite but do an ultrasound anyways. Doc starts telling the nurse he needs a list of things and when she comes back she has two other nurses with her. Turns out I had an abscess. They cut it open and cleaned all the dead tissue and pus. Was about 1 inches long x1 stroke 2 wide x1. 1 stroke 2 deep. Infection had started killing the muscle but luckily hadn't got tendons yet. Still seeing a wound specialist over it. The extra nurses were there to watch cause I guess they like that kinda stuff. I'm just glad it didn't turn out to be spider laid eggs in me. My daughter had a cough that sounds like a bark. You can hear her wheezing when she breathes, but when you listen to her lungs they are clear. Random x-ray found her heart was flipped and her aorta smashes her airway. Small red bump on my upper lip. Tiny, like the size of a pinhead or less. Would bleed and then heal over. A few days or a week later, would bleed again, and then would heal again. I knew what it was before the doctor did. He thought the biopsy would come back benign. Nope. Skin cancer. This reminds me. I need to have a spot checked up when I get back from my holiday. A sort of scab mole that bleeds when scratched. My childhood friend and I used to joke about how easy it was for her to get bruises. Like seriously easy. Bumping gently into a school desk could cause a massive bruise that would be apparent against her already dark skin. One year later she was diagnosed with leukemia. Though I was too young to remember much about how bad it was. I still think about her to this day. Same here. Everyone thought my parents hit me or something because I had a lot of bruises. Went to the hospital and was told I had leukemia. Took 4 years to get rid of it, but was lucky enough to make it through. Major depression, and anxiety, always needing to sleep, my emotions were pretty extreme. Turns out I was extremely anemic, 200 mg of iron every day for 2 months. I didn't realize anemia can look like depression. I felt like a new person once I got treated. I don't have heavy periods. My periods are pretty normal and light. Women who do have heavy cycles or abnormal ones can see a lot of iron deficiency. Due to that we didn't think to check until I begged my doctor for a blood panel. I had ferritin levels at a 3, protein that binds iron and a hematocrit of 25. I was in a bad shutdown mode. 
I'm anemic and have been feeling my symptoms coming back regardless of the iron I take. Wonder if it's time to up the dosage with my doc. A couple years back, I had an infection just past my tonsils in my throat. I didn't know, but I couldn't get anything past it, be it liquid or solid. I really wasn't too worried, it was a huge nuisance to me. When I got to the other second one, mind you, I had it surgically removed. I was told after if it had lasted any longer, another hour or so, or I had jostled it just right, right in a bad sense, it would have popped and the liquid inside probably would have killed me. Went to urgent care with a sore throat neck and headache. Was told I had strep without doing a test. 9 hours later was in the air with a very high fever. Couldn't move my neck. And the worst headache pain I've ever experienced in my life. Was admitted to the hospital for over a week with bacterial meningitis. My ear felt slightly sore on the inside so I went to a walk-in clinic. The doctor said there was possibly a mild ear infection and gave me some antibiotics. The next morning part of my mouth felt tingly while brushing my teeth and within the hour half of my face was starting to go numb. I was nervous I was reacting to the antibiotics so I went to another walk-in clinic. It turned out to be Bell's palsy and because I got there early enough and got more medicine it only lasted 16 days. Definitely scary having no movement in half of the face with no guarantee of it coming back. I don't think they even give medicine for that. It's just something that happens then goes away. My dad at 71 years old started to get a stomach ache, which isn't odd for him, so he took him in to relieve it. Within the span of maybe 4 hours the pain to go bad that he drove himself to an emergency room, and due to his age was taken straight in for tests. They had him there for almost a whole day before figuring out what was wrong with him. It seemed like it might be his appendix, but it was on the wrong side. After many scans they concluded that it was indeed his appendix and he would have to be operated on to remove said appendix and to flip his whole digestive track over. He'd had an accident at work several months earlier where a machine had thrown him across a room, and they suspect that this is when his intestines got all twisted. Holy freaking crap. I fainted a few years ago when getting donuts after a tooth had split in two. I don't even know how. I woke up a minute later and we went to the hospital. No, I didn't get any donuts. Six hours of tests later, I found that I have a cavernous malformation, malformed blood vessel. If I get hit in the head hard enough or even strain my body enough, lifting weights, it could burst and cause severe brain damage and or death though external bleeding. Nowadays, I just have to get an MRI every 2-5 years for a checkup on how it's doing. It could actually start bleeding at any time. Fun times. I thought I had a case of pink eye, went to the doctor, got meds for it, it didn't clear up, a week of basically lying in a darkened room later it spread to the other eye, went to the ear, turned out to be a viral eye infection, which is unusual as far north as I live, turns out my weakened immune system, from losing most of a finger a few weeks before, enabled the virus to get me, had to get iodine in my eyeballs a few times, one stroke ten, would not repeat. I was in New York with my family when the night before our last day I felt like I couldn't actually get a full breath of air in. My family and I mostly brushed it off because our lungs frankly aren't really used to city air. The next morning I woke up with a 105 fever and I felt like I had no energy. My dad still wanted to make the best of our last day so I mustered up the ability to walk around Chinatown with them for the whole day, while mostly leaning on one of my two parents. We immediately flew home after we had lunch and straight to the doctor's office. Got an x-ray and a concerned look from the doctor because what he saw was a high schooler's x-ray with lungs covered with splotches in my lungs. I went for an MRI scan and got a lot of tests. Turns out I had a case of double pneumonia that was so bad it literally looked like I had lung cancer. I thought I just had cold hands sometimes. Turns out it is Reynaud's, which led to my getting a complete blood workup. Apparently I have lupus. I have Reynaud's. I should mention this to my rheumatologist as she seems to think I have Ra but I am pretty sure there's more going on. I had it in my nipples both times I was pregnant. That hurt way too much. I had a hard time falling asleep a few years ago. I always felt anxious and could never seem to catch my breath. Turns out the left and right sides of my heart weren't beating in sync. 
pretty common really, they anesthetized me, stopped my heart, and restarted it, never had any problems since. Ah, the old turn it off and back on again approach, glad it worked. Started walking a few miles daily cause I was getting old and fat, got a slight pain in my hip that continued to get worse. After 6 different specialists tried to diagnose it, a neurologist that they sent me to, thinking it was all in my head I guess, diagnosed me with avascular necrosis. 4 years later complete hip replacement, didn't see that crap coming. Started having upper body and limb jerks every 30 seconds or so, turns out I have a seizure disorder acquired as an adult for no good reason. Same here, the whole seizure disorder acquired as an adult part, I miss driving my new car lol. Thought my period was coming, nope, pregnant and liver failing. Thought I just spaced out a lot, turns out I have absence seizures. Thought my cough was just my asthma acting up, pneumonia, morning sickness, nope, life threatening infection. For my entire life, it's been hard to fall asleep on time. I couldn't really fall asleep until 3 or 4 am, just didn't get tired, didn't matter what time I got up, and getting up was hard, like hitting snooze 13 times and not remembering I did it, was constantly late to work, I finally got a sleep study done because a workers comp claim demanded it, turns out I have severe delayed sleep phase syndrome, I'm permanently dismissed from jury duty, it's wrecked havoc on my education and career choices, cause I'm limited to second shift time frames, makes it hard to go to early classes, exams, training, internships, meetings, hotel checkouts, flights, etc. Blood in my urine. The first time, I was busy at work and had gotten a bit dehydrated, it was just a single drop at the end of the stream, so I didn't worry that much. A few weeks later, I was in Hawaii on vacation with some friends, again, dehydrated, again, just a drop, I'll mention it to my doc next time I'm in. A few weeks after that, it was a solid stream of red, I went to the doc the next day, he said it was probably a UTI or a kidney stone, or it could be cancer, but that's really unlikely, sent me for an ultrasound to check, it was cancer. Had a rash once on my chest kinda small, went to the doctor and found out I had gotten shingles which is a 1, 8, at 15 years old also found out I had a gigantic rash on my back. When I was a kid I got shingles on my forehead which spread into my eye, fun times. I had a small headache that just wouldn't go away, it slowly got worse and worse over the course of about a week. And by the time I ended up going to check it out, I was finding it painful to look at light sources. Thankfully it wasn't meningitis or encephalitis, but I did have a severe sinus infection and a potassium deficiency, and if I hadn't come in for that checkup there could have been some serious damage. The moral of the story, if something is persistent be it a cough, headache, itch, you name it, get it checked out. It's probably nothing, but you don't want to let it spiral out of control if it is something. I used to sweat a lot, like, I was always hot, it was crazy, in the winters I would be perfectly happy in a t-shirt and jeans, I'd sweat just walking through the grocery store, it was awful, I tried prescription strength antiperspirant, and wearing wicking clothing, nothing worked, one day I went to the doctors for my yearly and they said my blood pressure was 170 stroke 110 and that they were shocked I wasn't actively having a hypertensive crisis right there, I said my blood pressure was often very high and it had been that way since puberty, I often had migraines, but my previous doctors just told me it was because of my high blood pressure, my very astute doctor told me number 23 year old should have blood pressure that high and she was concerned I had damaged my kidneys. She asked me to go and have my kidneys MRIs. I was 23 and thus, invincible, so I sort of blew it off. I had lived with migraines and sweating nearly my entire life. I hit puberty at 10, and I didn't have time for that noise. Eventually, she called my work, and told my boss to have me contact her. So I called her back and she very seriously told me to go and have my MRI. So I did. Turns out I had a very rare tumor called a pheochromocytoma, so rare it was featured on the show house. 
Normally, these sorts of tumors hang out on near the kidneys, but mine was even rarer and was in between my vena cava and my aorta. It had hooked into my blood supply and was growing very happily. It was massive, grapefruit sized, and would often push against both my vena cava and my aorta, causing my migraines. The sweating came about because the tumor produces mass quantities of adrenaline and norepinephrine. By the time they caught the tumor I had 13 times the catecholamines, flight fight hormones, in my system that a normal functioning person would have. I was constantly on edge, and it was just how I thought my personality was. Anyway, I was put on medicine to stop all catecholamine production and told to stop doing anything dangerous. I was told that if a tumor was provoked in any way, including a biopsy, it could release a massive dose of catecholamines and trigger a heart attack. They did surgery after my catecholamine production dropped and now I'm perfectly perfect. No more sweating. No more headaches. And all because one good doctor saw my high blood pressure and sweating and realized I was probably in danger. Jesus Christ. That's terrible. Had to stop reading for a few minutes because it was so crazy. Let's hope that it was just your body freaking with you. Hope you're doing well. About 6 months ago I woke up and my left eye felt bigger for a lack of better terms. I didn't think much of it, didn't get a lot of sleep that night so I thought I could have been that. Had plans that day so I didn't consider checking it out or even worry about it. Went about my day, breakfast, an aunt's birthday party for lunch and work in the evening. All the while feeling fine, just that my eye felt a little weird. Go out with some friends later that night for a few drinks. Have a Long Island iced tea. Take a sip and my mouth feels a little weird. My mouth is puckering a little but assume it's cause of the sour mix in the drink. As the night goes on I notice it's getting a little worse until a friend says hey, you know your left eye isn't blinking went to the bathroom to check it out and they were correct. Went to hospital to learn I had Bell's palsy. They think it's caused by Lyme disease. Put me on antibiotics. Wake up the next day and my ear is a little swollen and think I have an ear infection. Go back to the doctors because I don't know what I can take for it while on the antibiotics. Turns out I had shingles, and it manifested in the nerve of my ear. Out of work for 2 weeks, month and a half till I can move my face again. 3 months till completely resolved. TL. DR. Woke up and my eye felt weird. Had Bell's palsy and shingles at the same time. My first period ever, my parents and I thought my kidneys were failing because I was in so much pain. My kidneys weren't failing though and I just kinda gritted my teeth and we never went to the doctors for it. Fast forward 8 years and I offhandedly mentioned to a friend that my plans had changed and I probably won't get a piercing that day, as I was on my period and didn't wanna pass out or anything. She looks at me in absolute horror and asks me why the frick my period would make me more vulnerable to passing out. It was at that point that I started questioning if my periods were normal. After asking my friends, it turns out taking over 2 grams of ibuprofen a day for a week just to be able to walk is not normal. Well I have endometriosis and I'm also infertile at 20 because it was so strong but left untreated. I woke up one night with a nolly stomach ache. I figured it was gas or something and it would pass if I just slept it off. I woke up every 15 minutes or so with an even worse feeling in my stomach. Luckily I was visiting my parents and my dad is a very light sleeper, so he saw me walking around in obvious pain. I told him I had a bad stomach ache and it didn't feel normal. He convinced me to go to the hospital but I was reluctant because we had tickets to the Bills game that day. The pain kept getting worse and worse so I caved and let them take me to the hospital. When we got there the pain was so bad I was in tears so eventually they gave me morphine. It took a couple hours and an MRI but eventually the doctor came in and said I had appendicitis. At this point it was pretty inflamed and it could burst soon so they were going to have to remove it. Now there was no way I was making it to the Bills game. The surgery went well and I was discharged the next day. It took a couple weeks of recovery and I'm still pretty salty that my own appendix tried to take me out. All in all I'm pretty lucky my parents were there to convince me to go to the hospital because if not my own stubbornness probably would have killed me. Had this happened to me this past Friday. Good on your folks for taking you. My heart rate was randomly dropping to like 30-40 bpm and I just felt so tired. 
I would pass out randomly and feel like I was unable to come back and just keep passing out a handful of times in a row before I would finally come to an hour or so later really disoriented. It only happened at work twice and they just thought it must have been my blood sugar, or a sudden drop in blood pressure since nothing showed up medically wrong with me by the time the ambulances would arrive. Sometimes when I took a nap I would be unable to wake up. That sound like a joke. But I would wake up and start to try and walk across my room and pass out and fall on the floor. I'd slept through 17 or 18 hours in a nap before all on accident and missed work, school, church, parties, failed to meet friends, etc. I was also talking to a therapist about my anxiety and depression, how much worse it had been lately, and that I'd started hallucinating in the 3-4 hours before bed and couldn't make it stop and needed help. The poor guy helped me immensely. But the hallucinations weren't going away and I was walking around feeling like I was trapped in some sort of sick dream world that wouldn't let me out. Not to mention I couldn't figure out why I could just never wake up. Now, Reddit. I'd heard of narcolepsy before, but I had no freaking clue it was what I was dealing with. TLDR. Heart rate was 30-40 BPM. Kept passing out. Feeling like I couldn't wake up. Slept 17-18 hours in naps on accident sometimes and missed some major life events. Was hallucinating 3-4 hours before sleep and starting to get crazy anxious. Turns out I'm narcoleptic. OMG I can't wake up from naps either, it's horrible. Luckily not to the same extent as you, but you have my sympathy I know what a weird and powerless feeling it is. Kind of being aware of what's going on but not able to respond. I get a lot of sleep paralysis too but this is different. I've never had a period. I had one regular period my sophomore year of high school, and then nothing. Just some spotting. Or maybe the occasional cramp. For three more years. I just assumed that my body was trying to regulate itself or whatever until my doctor saw that I wrote May 2016 as my last period. I had to get a bunch of blood work done and as of right now she is going to monitor me for the rest of the year. She mentioned that there is a chance I could have something called PCOS, which after some research on my own, turns out it can lead to infertility. I thought it was strange I didn't have a regular schedule, but I never thought to ask about it. I'm kinda stuck in limbo now waiting to see what is wrong with my body. I just want to add a thank you to all of the lovely people responding down below. You've all been very helpful and it's been nice knowing if I do have it, it isn't as awful as I thought. Horrific diarrhea 24 stroke 7 plus I couldn't hold it long once I had the feeling to go. I had about one and a half to two minutes to get myself situated because it was coming no matter what I did. I drove around with large plastic Starbucks cups and would fill the whole thing every time or just pull over and go. I suffered with this for like three years because I didn't think it was anything too because it would happen like two stroke three times a month but once it started happening more and more like more than once in a week and then got even worse like daily. I finally went to the doctor. I had to get a colonoscopy at 20 years old. I guess I have celiac disease parried with a spasming intestines. I've been gluten free for about a year lost 30 pounds and don't have any issues unless I get a cold. Constipation, and the right side of my body being bigger than the left since birth. As it turns out, that means kidney cancer. It began 20 years ago with sudden, literally overnight onset of lactose intolerance. Because of my genetic background, I figured that this was normal as my family history goes back to warmer climates. Then, slowly, over time, I somehow normalized never having a solid poo, and being constantly nauseous. I found myself blocking out 2 hours of my every morning, including getting up before dawn if I had to be somewhere early in the day, just to empty my bowels. But again, I normalized all of this because I was only going in the mornings and figured that as long as I went, everything was fine. It wasn't until the symptoms got so bad that I was walking around in freezing weather with my coat unbuttoned because anything touching my throat would make me puke, that I went to the doctor about 5 months ago. I was thinking it was a gallbladder issue, but the blood test said celiac disease. I'd been poisoning myself with gluten for 2 decades. I've just had biopsies taken from my stomach and I'm hoping that the damage I've done is reversible. There's a chance that it's not, which puts me at heightened risk for certain cancers and other autoimmune diseases. I get my results on Tuesday. Good luck, buddy X. 
you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Bye for now.